College. We have the pleasure today of having Vice President Shevchovich with us for this readout. Uh, apologies for the delay in uh, the start of this readout, and therefore I pass the floor immediately to the Vice President. Thank you very much, Eric. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for being uh, here with us today. Before moving on the main topic uh, of this readout, our first ever uh, strat uh, strategic foresight report, let me take you through the points which we discussed uh, uh, during today's uh, college meeting. The college discussed uh, three points. Vice President Hinas, as well as Commissioners Johansson and Lenarcic, informed the college about the fires in the Moria refugee camp on the Greek island of Lesbos. And uh, let me please express my sympathy with the people of Lesbos, and in particular, the inhabitants of the camp and uh, the workers there on behalf of the college. President von der Leyen has asked Vice President Hinas uh, to go to Greece as soon as possible. Secondly, the College discussed the follow-up it has given to the resolution of the European Parliament uh, from May asking the European Commission for a contingency plan in the case of uh, non-agreement on the multiannual financial framework. It noted uh, that it had responded to this resolution uh, through the adoption of the next uh, generation EU recovery package. Then uh, Commissioner Hahn debriefed the College on the ongoing negotiations with the European Parliament and the Council on the MFF and the next generation EU. And finally, High Representative uh, Vice President Borrell informed the College on the evolution of the international situation since uh, the last time the College, uh, uh, the college uh, has uh, met. And uh, before coming to the, to the main topic of, uh, 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 of uh, today's college, which is strategic foresight uh, uh, report, uh, I also uh, would like uh, uh, to inform you that uh, yesterday I had a phone call with the Chancellor of the Duchy of uh, Lancaster, Michael Gow, with whom I co-chair the EU-UK Joint Committee on the Withdrawal Agreement. I expressed uh, our strong concerns and sought assurances that the UK will fully and timely comply with the withdrawal agreement, including the protocol on Ireland, Northern Ireland. In uh, this context, I will call for an extraordinary joint committee on the uh, withdrawal agreement to be held as soon as possible so that our UK partners uh, elaborate uh, and respond to our strong concerns uh, on the bill. Once uh, the British uh, government, as announced, uh, uh, will table uh, the bill, which is expected this afternoon, uh, our president uh, will react, uh, and after that uh, we will study the bill carefully and I believe that uh, the Joint Committee would be the most appropriate venue for further discussion. And now, if you uh, allow me to turn to the uh, strategic uh, foresight report, I have to say that I am uh, very proud uh, that the European Commission is the first major public uh, administration to bring strategic foresight into the highest uh, political level. And uh, I think that the corona uh, crisis has shown that this instinct was uh, spot on. Today's college has adopted its uh, first ever strategic foresight report and its timing has been chosen to inform the President von der Leyen's uh, State of the Union address. The Commission uh, has used uh, foresight for many years, but until now it uh, was used on a piecemeal basis and largely stayed at the arm's length from the political level. Why? because very often the political actors tend to focus on the short term uh, prone to seeking quick fixes. While strategic uh, foresight challenges uh, the status quo and focuses uh, 
uh, our minds on the next generation rather uh, than the next election. This commission is set to explore the strategic value of uh, foresight, and before I elaborate uh, how we will do it, uh, let me be clear. Strategic foresight is not a crystal ball or the science fiction. The future cannot be predicted, especially in today's world of rapid, uh, complex changes, uh, because new trends uh, and shocks uh, like uh, uh, corona uh, virus uh, will inevitably emerge and affect uh, our lives. But what does uh, make sense, uh, however, is to constantly keep an eye on uh, the horizon, to spot early signs of emerging challenges, to assess uh, the likelihood or risks, and to integrate uh, this uh, knowledge into our action. This is what uh, strategic foresight is about, anticipating, exploring, and acting. And the third part, I would underline the word acting, is what makes the foresight strategic. There must be a firm link with our political and uh, policy work. We have uh, no time to spare. The pandemic has thrown a sharp light uh, on uh, our vulnerabilities, but it has also presented opportunities uh, that the EU cannot afford to miss. So let me tell you what our strategic foresight report says. First, we start embedding uh, strategic foresight into our policy making. In other words, uh, we will use it when preparing major initiatives uh, across all policy areas, and this will bring the long term into the short term uh, political focus and ultimately help us uh, future proof EU laws and policies. Take our first example, the Commission's recent action plan on critical raw materials. Strategic foresight complements the criticality assessment by providing the 2030 and 2050 outlook both demand and supply risk for strategic technologies and sectors. Now, this foresight knowledge feeds directly into our action plan to boost Europe's open strategic autonomy. So using foresight strategically, this uh, can be a true game changer. In addition, we will launch an EU-wide foresight uh, network with other institutions, member states, think tanks, academia, civil society and uh, international uh, organizations. And I believe that in this case, my other hat as a Vice President for Interinstitutional Relations can help. Our ambition should be nothing less than to establish world-class anticipatory governance. Second, today's report starts applying strategic foresight to resilience as one of the main lessons drawn from this pandemic. Resilience is becoming our new policy compass and therefore it takes the center stage in this report. More concretely, uh, we show what COVID-19 has taught us about Europe's green, digital, socioeconomic and geopolitical resilience. For each dimension, the report identifies our vulnerabilities, strengths and opportunities exposed by the crisis. Overall, it paints a picture of what needs to be addressed in medium to long term. To walk the talk on resilience, we must be able to monitor it. So we will see that we are proposing to move towards resilience dashboards. Once fully developed in cooperation with the member states and other key stakeholders, they should uh, help us assess vulnerabilities and uh, capacities at both EU and national level. Ultimately, we need uh, uh, to be able to answer one core question. Are we through our policies and recovery strategies, making the EU more resilient. This broad approach to measuring and monitoring resilience should uh, feed into an integrated uh, approach to measuring people's well-being. The COVID-19 crisis has uh, reignited the public debate uh, on the importance of many aspects of the quality and sustainability of human life, such as education, income, jobs and health. There has been a strong consensus in the international community on the need to go beyond conventional economic measures like GDP and to make well-being a policy target. The EU wants to lead in this work. Foresight will inform EU political priorities, uh, major initiatives in the Commission work programme, as well as major uh, cross-cutting initiatives. And this is uh, what I would like to underline are the third points where we outline the next uh, political program for the strategic foresight. We would focus on open strategic economy, uh, where we could uh, 
uh, with the help of foresight, uh, uh, look for better horizon scanning, including as regards international standardization to be used as a strategic lever by the EU. We are going to focus on the future of jobs and skills linked to the green economy. For instance, in depth uh, view of the labor market shifts uh, driven by the green transition, which is still missing. And we will also explore how the green and digital transitions can rhyme better together. For instance, by looking at energy consumption, we see the transferring of storing one gigabyte uh, of data through the internet uses up to seven kilowatt hour compared to uh, fifth millionth of uh, kilowatt hour if done locally. To sum up, First, we will collectively develop a world-class anticipatory governance system by embedding strategic foresight into an agenda, setting and policy making, horizon scanning, mega trends analysis, reference scenario planning, and we will apply to all our major initiatives and foresight in that way will become an integral part of our better regulation toolbox. And second, we start opera operationalizing the concept of resilience as a, as a compass with an honest assessment of where Europe stands in terms of social and economic, geopolitical, green and digital resilience, and we also develop ways of monitoring our progress on resilience to make sure that we are making the EU and its member states more resilient. And third, we have outlined a clear political program for foresight and in particular three high-impact cross-cutting priorities for the coming months open strategic autonomy, future work linked to the green transition, and deepening the synergies between the green and digital transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice President. Uh, we will now move to your uh, questions. Um, let me remind you that we have interpretation today into German, English, French, Spanish,